This is one of the ways that we grow hundreds of chestnut trees. We do it with other tree varieties as well, but you know, this is an interesting one specifically because we're able to do it for free. These are just Christmas chestnuts. I mean, they're nice nuts. You can see, you know, that's a nice quality, good quality nut. That's exactly the sort of thing that you want to be pulling from a tree if you can. So at the point that we're coming up on Christmas now, these things are brought into the supermarkets. I don't think they sell massively well. I think they're mostly there just to give the sort of, you know, the vibe of Christmas. Um, you know, it's fine, it works. But when they don't sell, they get reduced a couple of times and then they get offered to the staff for free. And that's the point that I picked them up at. So these have effectively cost me absolutely nothing. And yeah, it could make a really nice stuffing for Christmas Day. Or I can turn them into a bunch of trees and people will be pulling, you know, chestnuts for making stuffings for the next couple of thousand years potentially chestnuts are amazing they can yield for thousands of years literally it's like an immortal food production system they're amazing there aren't really good chestnut varieties for this far north so i'm doing my own i've bought nuts from various places um we got some from uh that were italian last year they've done really well i mean how they'll actually produce when it comes time to cropping who knows but in terms of growth they've done incredibly well in fact you know, pan down here, show this. These were planted up last year, and you can see that's easily what 18 inches of, of growth just in its first year. Absolutely amazing. I'm really pleased with them. Whereas these ones here were again from the freebie nuts. So you can see they're good quality, they're really strong trees. They haven't grown as aggressively as high, but they haven't had as deep um, a mulch to grow in either. These were grown straight into this stuff rotting wood mulch. It's not just the, um, uh, you know, the actual coarse woody material. There's plenty of that as well. There's also a load of um, uh, leaves and a little bit of um, uh, uh, pine needles and so on. You know, the whole thing. I can't remember. There was at least seven, eight, maybe even as many as ten species in amongst this. It's a really mixed group of, uh, of stuff. So it's, it's breaking down a really nice, diverse wood chip. You know, I'm really pleased with it. We're using it in a lot of, well, for a lot of stuff, but this is the last of it. This, at the point that it, you know, gets swapped out, will still get put onto raised beds and so on, because this year, these chestnuts are going to be planted out and they're going to be replaced by this lot. So these are just one year old, but they're ready to go into the ground. They're strong enough. Um, here we're in a situation where we instead of going out and spending a lot of money on a few chestnut trees we've gone out and we spent no money at all on hundreds and hundreds of trees and we plant them out in the knowledge that quite a few of them are going to die it's going to be too cold or it'll be too wet or it'll be too warm or it'll be too dry or whatever or you know the wrong sort of pest pressure or the wrong sort of fungal conditions or whatever and they'll die and we let them die that's fine they're not the ones that we want it's the survivors that we're interested in the ones that just keep producing and growing year after year and then once they start actually getting big enough that they actually they are producing nuts which of those produce nuts the earliest and those are the ones that we're interested in because that gives us a source of seed for the next generation but also we've just discovered a new variety that is absolutely suitable for the scottish highlands it's the only way of doing it plant them by the hundred if i could i'd be spending a lot of money on nuts that were much you know closer to home instead of provenance so i've got a little bit of uh, suitability in terms of genetics but you really don't need to if you're planting enough trees you're going to find some that will stick. If you chuck enough at the wall, some of it's going to stick. So that's what we're doing with these. So I've got an empty crate. I put it up on a wooden block. And really, we found that that is enough. If they're on the ground, then rodents can get in. You know, they'll get in and they'll chew the nuts out and they'll have a great time all winter. What we find is that just putting it up on a couple of bricks is enough. So a block like this is overkill, but that's fine. So normally, I just go with straight wood chip. This year, I'm trying to use the wood chip to pass it through animal bedding just to get a use out of it. Uh, so this is well used animal bedding with wood chip mixed in. So the very bottom layer of the goose house, we build it up and up and up. This is, you know, so it's got fresh bedding on top all the time. This is the really anaerobic stuff on the bottom. It's been breaking down for months. It's a lovely condition. It's halfway to compost, really incredibly rich. So I'm gonna put a layer of this in at the bottom of it just to a nutrient source so we get some really big trees. Uh, then I'm going to put the, the nuts on and then I'll top it off with wood chip. Just might even have a little bit of wood chip under the nuts as well, depending on how far this seems to go. Um, it's, we'll, we'll layer it up and we'll film it as we go. But the first thing is to get that into there and then we'll think about getting the nuts in. So that's the crate. I mean, it's just about the perfect amount as it goes. I wasn't expecting that. But because I want to bring it 
right up to the level. It will settle a little, even though I've tamped it down. So I'm going to get just some plain wood chip. I mean, this stuff's really diverse. So there's even the old pine cone in it. You know, it's from, there's not that much pine in it, but of course that's really stable carbon. It takes a long time to break down. So that's more identifiable than some of the other material. You know, there's beech, there's rowan, there's, uh, there's a bit of oak, there's some ash in it, a lot of birch. Actually, there's quite a bit of beech from what I remember from this batch. But I'm using gloves for all of this because you know, there's a lot of wildlife around that, including feral cats, that identify any wood chip as just instant litter boxes. So I'm always careful handling the wood chip that's been sitting. But I think that'll do. So now I'm going to take the nuts. Now I'm going to take the, the better quality ones, the, you know, the, the ones that have got the bigger meat in them, and select for them just because these probably have the best chance of sprouting, the ones that have got the greatest mass. And I'll plant them fairly densely. I'll probably then come through. I mean, that's, a, that's really nice. I'll come through afterwards, after I put one layer out, and I'll even perhaps put another layer between them, depending on how many nuts I've got left. I want to get them all into this crate. But before I cover them up, we'll come down and show you just how densely they're planted. So you can see just how densely they're planted. I've just basically, you know, tried to avoid them touching each other. So if there is a fungal issue, you know, won't spread from nut to nut or, you know, we'll only take out a couple of them. They're usually pretty good. We have a couple of them rot in the ground. Um, the the, the take-up of these wasn't fantastic. But these were going in, it was very late in the year. You know, they've been on the shelves a really long time by the time we came up, uh, came in contact with them. So they were quite shrilled up. I knew that it wasn't going to be a fantastic take. Whereas the numbers on the uh, the ones we've done in previous years have been very, very high. Like, you know, 80, 90, even, you know, 96, 97 odd percent probably. You know, very few failures. So I'm hoping for more of a result with that this year. Um, now, what's interesting at this point is these are going to be planted out as the last ones that we are going to plant out on the land, including the Italian ones. Um, they're going to be planted out into the whole system just to, you know, see what survives and what doesn't, you know, the stun method. But <laughs> these are going to be the first ones that we're going to do here on site that are going to be entirely for sale. So at this point, every seedling that we can get, good quality seedling, um, is potentially four, five, six pounds, depending on what sort of size it is. So at this point, we are literally growing money for the first time. And that's exciting. It's that transition from we literally can't take any more chestnut trees ourselves, but other people will. Um, another interesting thing is one of my colleagues, <laughs> after he heard I was doing this, it was, you know, appearance of Gotland has started doing the same. So that's very cool. There's someone else growing chestnut trees here now. Because <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, discount nuts. You could make a lovely stuffing with them, or you can plant a seed that's going to last for thousands of years potentially. You know, with uh, good management through coppicing, and it can be you know productive food plant for thousands of years. It can support huge amounts of biomass, huge amount of wildlife support, give huge amount of food to humans, a huge amount of animal fodder. You know, I mean, there's no finer pig feed than uh, than chestnuts. It's amazing. It's virtually entirely carbohydrate based. It's uh, it's a wonderful nut um, really it's, it's a nut that can form a significant amount of the human diet and you know people will thrive on it people have done in parts of Italy for you know thousands of years so yeah I'm really looking forward to getting more of them in the ground but this is exciting in an entirely different way because this is now an income stream so at this point my objective is just to level off the crate across the top give them a nice covering of just plain wood chip so it's not even that much of it, really. It's, uh, it's just starting to thaw out now, so earlier in the day it wouldn't have. In fact, that's a little bit of ice, but also look at the mycelium, the white web growing through that. It's really nice. So these trees are growing in soil that is basically rotted down woodland, basically. So it's full of fungal networks it's exactly the sort of soil the trees love to grow in. So it's better than anything you can get at a garden centre. Really, the only way to do it is to get a load of really good quality wood chip with loads of, uh, you know, leaf matter and so on in, not just, you know, ground up logs. 
and uh, yeah, I'm going to mound this up a little bit. And the other thing I'll do when I've finished is just give it a bit of protection, which I do every year. And as I say, I'm hoping that there'll be a lot more than this. You know, I could easily get four or five times this amount. In which case, all I'll do is I'll just stack the crates up to sort of yay high. So that each one, as it goes on top, protects the one underneath from things like crows from coming in and having a dig around. And uh, just keep an eye on them as things start to warm up in the spring. And as they start to sprout, we separate them out and put them into the tree nursery which actually has existed right on the driveway this year. We haven't taken them around the back, but really this should be around the back with all the other trees. There was a lot to go on this year. So a lot of that sort of stuff got left. So that's it. I mean, I didn't count them, but that's what about 30 minutes of work. And that's easily several hundred pounds worth of trees. And all I gotta do is just give them water occasionally through the summer uh, and buy 15, 16 months maybe. It's not a bad return considering I taken wood chip that was free, a log that cost me three pounds, and even then I'll burn that as firewood when I'm finished with it. Uh, the crate washed up on the beach. Uh, the animal manure obviously is just a byproduct of our system. And even the nuts were free, the seeds were free. So it's not a bad return that.